And hello, welcome back to the Escapade Show. Uh, well, today's a, today's a belter. We are joined with Mr. Chris Kyle, who right. potentially could be the coolest guy in Scotland right now. Yeah, definitely not, but thank you. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate it. Humble, I like it. Good yeah. start. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good, man. Really good. Just uh, Finally, we've made it happen. I know. After about a year of talking about it, it's sick to finally sit down in here and, um, yeah, tell the story and tell you what I've been up to, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, speaking of stuff you've been up to, I mean, it's been the topic of what we've been talking about for the last, you know, since you released the video. Yeah. That Dubai stunt. Yeah. <laughs> Initial thoughts. Yeah. Nice one, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, that for me was a dream come true, getting to... Like, I flew out there, I'll start at the start, but I flew out there at the start of the year, start of last year, uh, 2018, to, um, well, first of all, Red Bull messaged me, right, asking if uh, I'd be up for working with Visit Dubai and um, <laughs> doing like a, it started off as just like a normal riding video, like a street video, so I was like, oh yeah, sweet, like I'd love to do that, so we flew out on a recce to like look at spots and make a note of spots that I wanted to do, and then we got out there, the spots were amazing, and um I couldn't believe it. It was just like they gave us the keys to the city pretty much. And um, yeah, I remember we went up on top of the helipad on top of the Burj Al Arab and they were like, oh yeah, is there anything that you think you could do up here? <laughs> and then uh, I just kind of said it as a joke. I was like, well, I was like, probably not, but I was like, you could jump out of a helicopter if you, uh, well, if you, if we could get a helicopter. <laughs> if you fancy that. <laughs> yeah, you fancy it. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then like I made a list Aww. of spots. So yeah, went went back and I, I remember being, I was back home for like two weeks and now I got an email through it was like, oh, yeah, hi, Chris. Um, yeah, we've okayed the helicopter and this and that, so it's definitely happening. <laughs> and right away, my, my heart just sank. I was like... That was a joke. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> what have I got myself into? And then, um, yeah, but it was like... It was so hot out there during the year. We couldn't film until November um, when it got a bit cooler. So I was sweating this heli jump for the whole year. And then, um, yeah, I got out there in November. I was out there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And just kind of ticked it all off one by one. But, wow, um, man. Wow, man. It's the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, and it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, you were saying about, obviously, like, Dubai is one of these places that gets, like, a crazy amount of heat. Like, you're talking 40 degrees, aren't you? Like, kind of peak time. Yeah. So you were you were having to go out and film early and stuff. Tell us a wee bit about that and, like, how that was all happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, good job I'm a morning person because we were getting up at, like, half five in the morning riding for 6 a.m. just because it was still that hot and mm -hmm. you know I mean being from Scotland we are not used to that heat you know no. <laughs> not designed for it but um yeah so we were going to like I remember riding the water parks we'd we'd actually meet there for like quarter to six in the morning and they'd have the water all turned off and it's that hot the plate it dries out you know but um we only had a small amount of time to be in there like mm -hmm. two hours or so to get in there and get the job done and what I wanted to do so mm -hmm. Some of the stuff I was pretty scared to do because especially the slides were so high up and, um, yeah, if you went out the side or something like you... No, it's very dangerous. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like watching the video, mate, when you're going down the thing, see there's one bit when you come down, you jump into another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that there is, there's so much open, you come off the side to you later, uh, Chris, man, no, is, no video. Yeah. Uh, like, well, wow, man. <laughs> yeah. Did you get much time to like, practice that? No, not at all. That's, like We were in there and we had two hours and it was straight in, straight to shooting. And there was one where I do like a loop kind of thing, like yeah, yeah. a loop. I've never really done one of them before. So, and that doesn't look that big on the footage, but see when you're mm -hmm. in there, like it's, it's massive. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, I was like, I've never really done one of these, what's going to happen? And then, but I didn't have any time to be scared. Because like I said to the guy, Matty, my filmer, I was like, I'm going to look at this three times mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to go and do it. Mm -hmm. And um, sure enough, I was like, right, you good, Matty? And I was like, yeah. and he's like, yeah. So I just went, done it. And I was like, what? Like, what a buzz at mm. rolling six in the morning. So, but, um, yeah, like that, especially from being a kid and getting to go to water parks and stuff, it's always like, you look at it and you imagine like riding that on a bike or a skateboard or whatever, so to get the opportunity to go to the, the best water parks in the world. Wow, and actually do it. This. Yeah, so. So yeah. That, was that always on your mind to ride the water park or was that just one of the locations you seemed you were out there? Is that something you'd always wanted to do kind so, of thing? Yeah, something I, I'd always dreamed about doing just because it just looks so much mm -hmm. fun and yeah it's incredible it's pretty much a massive crazy skate park mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. yeah so when we were out there in dubai we and uh, we got to go on a recce and look at all the water parks and stuff so it was a uh, yeah it was pretty mm. sweet tell me once it hit about nine ten o'clock were you going into the water park uh at night <laughs> did you actually go to the what? water park and just have, no, have no, fun <laughs> no we actually didn't um i was gonna go um because me and my girlfriend we had like a holiday afterwards for like five days 
but it was still full on. I went skydiving and a bunch of like loads of other stuff. We didn't, unfortunately, we didn't have time, but I might be going back maybe this year. So I'll definitely be, yeah, <laughs> using the water parks for sure, but without the bike this time. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I can actually, do you know, it's funny that when you're saying that, like being like riding about in a water park, like from skateboarding or rollerblading or whatever it may be, you know, you think about how good would it be to be like in an airport or in a supermarket, you know, that sort of yeah. floor where it works. I've never even thought of a water park like with no water in it. And yeah. that. And when I <laughs> yeah. seen it, it was just like pure mind blown, yeah. man. Cheers, man. So yeah. onto the, the helicopter thing then. So, I mean, from you coming up with the, the idea, thinking that is this actually going to happen to yeah. actually happen? What was the process then? Like you had to go through to make that work? Um, yeah, so... <clears throat> When I actually flew out there, I remember flying out to Dubai and I, I was like, this is actually happening. I uh, I said I'd jump out this helicopter. It's, <laughs> I'm going to need to do this. And um, I'd already kind of programmed myself and talked myself into it. I was doing it no matter what or I was going to try it. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I remember we got there <clears throat> and as soon as I got in the helicopter, um, I'm really scared of heights. And um, first of all, he's like, do you want to sit in it and we'll fly around the city and get used to being in a helicopter because I've never really been in one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, or he's like, do you want to just get strapped onto the outside right now and we'll just kind of get, get stuck into it? And I was just like, just strap me onto the outside now. Let's do it. <laughs> so I just sat out flying out with no bike at first. And then mm -hmm. we flew around once with no bike, then strapped my bike on. And as soon as I held my, like, was holding my bike, I realized I was like, what have I got myself mm -hmm. in there? Because the wind just wanted to rip it right out of my hands. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so hard to hold onto the bike. It was like crushing my leg against the side of the heli. Wow. And uh, then wow. at that point, I was like, everyone's here for me. What if I can't actually do this? Mm -hmm. And we've built this landing ramp and all mm -hmm. this, and we've signed it all off. And what happens if I physically can't do this? And I just kind of... Pull out. Yeah, pull out on it. So... I'm sure they've still got some good shots of doing stuff, yeah, mate. You know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah, well, that was it. We kind of... We left the heli stuff to the very last um, thing that we were going to film. And I think that's a good idea, just in case I got hurt or didn't make it. You know, at least we'll have a video out of it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so as I say, when I was first doing the practice rides and stuff, then we went straight into, like, um, one of the first jumps. And I started off, I think, around... Only small, like, tiny, like, four foot or something like that, drop into the ramp. <laughs> But the wind, it just, it just kept taking my bike. And I, I had to fight so hard and mm -hmm. jump out and, like, rotate my body into the wind mm -hmm. and try and fight to hold on and to get it. And I was like, what? I, I got really angry at myself because mm -hmm. I was like, this isn't going to work. And mm -hmm. I can't, what if I can't kind do this? Through. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, it got me really annoyed. But I just kept going up and up and up and up and up. And then we maxed out at, like, um, 14 foot above a 12 foot ramp drop. And it's a practice one I posted on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. You'll see that one. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. And um. Yeah, so I maxed out that and I was comfortable with that. I wanted to go higher, but I was like, mm. I, I just, I, I don't know. It was so sketchy and it was really mm -hmm. windy and stuff. Yeah. So so the next day was the was a jump. So we came and did the jump the next day, got down there and um, they said, they're like, yeah, um, there's been a problem. You don't have the helicopter that you were practicing with. Um, it's just been a mechanical um, mm -hmm. failure or something like that. So right away I was like, what? <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like, mechanical failure. I was like, what, what's going on? Don't say that in and a then, sentence yeah, with helicopter, I know, yeah. please. <laughs> I know. And then, um, <laughs> so I was like, but they're like, don't worry. We've got the same, exact same helicopter, same shell, but it's uh, my, it's only got one engine and the helicopter I was practicing with had two. Uh, but my pilot, he was like, yeah, he's like, um, he's like, don't worry, Chris. He's like, it'll be more sturdy with the one engine. It means I can hold it better. But uh, I got in that one and right away I tried um, two practice jumps and they went wrong and it was it just felt windier and I think because mm -hmm. it had one engine it was working twice as hard as the other one so the wind was insane and then <clears throat> my third jump um, went well and then uh, bad weather came in as we we're going to fly up and do it so um, <sighs> it got called off and unfortunately that meant another sl sleepless night for me in the mm -hmm. hotel and knew knowing the next day that I had all this stuff to come and I had to get up there and do it. And sure enough, next day came around, the jumps didn't go to plan again. And then I had one good one out of like four jumps. And I was like, let's just go. Let's mm -hmm. just go and do this now. And um, went up there. <coughs> we flew around for a bit. And my arms started cramping because we were actually flying around and getting intro shots and stuff done. And just the sheer of your, your like being mm -hmm. te so tense with the bike. And then um, it came to doing the jump. And it wasn't um, even just the first drop. It was the second one. So... Mm -hmm. There's two flagpoles and I had to get, I had four meters um, in between the two jumps and I had to get like the bike straight enough to go through these um, flagpoles. 
So that was a, it wasn't just the first one. I was like, as soon as I land that and he hit the second one, and I was like, I don't know how fast I'm going to be going. So what if I miss the whole landing or I don't go fast enough or something? But um, sure enough, like um, I was in the airport and we're in the airport, in, in, the, in the balloon helicopter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, my Red Bull manager, Matt, he usually unclips me and then puts his hand on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And when he puts his hand on my shoulder, that means I'm good to jump. And Ready to go. Okay. But he says, on this case, he unclipped me. And went to put his hand on the shoulder on my shoulder, but as soon as he went to do that, I was already gone. So right. as soon as he unclipped me, I was just out the door, and I didn't, didn't even know if it was safe to jump or not. I just went. I was mm -hmm. that focused on the actual right. jump, and then I landed that second jump. Knew I'd done it. I was like, oh, I can't believe this. And then I met all the boys in the I've elevator at the bottom. And wow. Um, yeah, I just got clothes lined off the bike. Oh, <laughs> Everyone wow. went crazy. So yeah. now, one amazing, thing man. I picked up on there. You're scared of heights. Yeah, yeah, a bit big time. Right, so this is very interesting, I think, for people that are going to be watching this because how many of them out there will want to BMX or do stuff like that, but they're scared of heights? How do you manage that, being that your job entails going up heights a lot yeah. of the time? I think, um, like, I am so scared of heights, but I think because I'm on my bike and I can be up on top of a building or whatever or jumping out a helicopter, I'm so focused on what I'm doing on this bike mm -hmm. and where I'm landing and what I'm doing, I'm not looking anywhere You're else. You're forgetting that sort of forgetting stuff. Forgetting where I am, yeah. So I'm just kind of so focused on that uh, and not really looking around me, but it's when I stop and look around me. And I remember when we were flying in to do the, the heli drop and my friends were in another helicopter filming it. And then I, I, they were pretty close to us and I was like, this is crazy. I was like, that... Being in a helicopter looks so scary, and then I was like, I'm actually in one as well. I was like, this is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, that, like, mm. I'm in this, so I'm like, it's just mental. And then that's when I started to get scared, and my arms started cramping because I was like, I realized what I was doing. And mm -hmm. that helipad looks a lot smaller when you're flying up there as well. Mm -hmm. and I was so scared of like landing and then going squint and just flying off like the side or whatever, or even missing that ramp because it is a big old drop. So. Well, thank God you, you, you hit the ramp, mate. Yeah, 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 and yeah. you made a cracking video out of it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, what is it, over a million views or something already yeah. first week, man? Yeah, Both. I had, um, like I spoke to my manager the other, uh, last week and he says that, um, it's had over, I think, 3.5 million views already. And then it just hit a million on YouTube as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's been on their player and on Facebook and all over. So like all in, it's doing really well. So Wow, man. Amazing, right? So from the top of the Burj in Dubai, yeah. yeah to how it all began for you then and yeah. we were sitting in Dumbarton just now which happens to be yeah. the skate parks we say it's a stone throw away yeah, literally yeah. right there behind us yeah. shouts to unit 23 of course every yeah. time yeah. Um, so how did it all let's go right back to this, the start how did it all begin how did you end up in Dumbarton just yeah. kind of go from there alright so yeah well um, I'm originally from like a, a small town called Stranraer and um, <clears throat> it's pretty much middle of nowhere or whatever but I grew up there and um I kind of first of, all, first of all got started with BMX when I was 10 years old. But my older brother, Lee Kyle, he used to ride and um, I used to, my mum and dad used to take me out to the skate park and it looked as if like him and his mates were having the best fun ever. And I wanted to do that, I wanted to be part of that. So for my 10th birthday, I begged my mum and dad for like a small BMX mm -hmm. and um, I got it and I, I couldn't believe it. it was the best thing ever. And I was like, oh. and then I was, out riding with him every single day and all his friends and we had such a tight like little crew it was it was amazing and um yeah and then i just i was hooked you know and i didn't really i didn't really look back but uh as every they were all older than me so as they all got older they started getting into cars and stuff like that but i was i was a lot younger than them so <coughs> i was eventually left kind of by myself in like the last rider there um so I started coming up to the unit by myself, getting a train, which was three and a half hours from Stranraer to here, getting a train by myself. And being from like such a small town and coming up and going through Glasgow, such a big city, I remember the first time it's been like so intimidating. Just like New York? Yeah, yeah, I feel, yeah, just like <laughs> <laughs> not knowing where I was going or like being dead scared. But um, yeah, I used to do that when I was, I think I first started coming up here when I was 11, 11 or 12. So early on then? Yeah, very early on. And then... As time went on, I, I was up here riding every weekend. I made more friends up here. And I'd go back home and I'd be going to school. And uh, I had no friends that were really interested in what I'd done anymore. So they were all doing their own things. And mm -hmm. all I cared about was riding. So so I wanted to do. So eventually I, I didn't really have many, many friends there. And all my friends were kind of up here, it felt like. Um, so 
Yeah, and then when I was kind of 14 years old, well, my mum kind of, she was super supportive with my mum and dad. They'd give me like, my mum's actually a, um, a school teacher at my school. She helps kids with disabilities and that. And my dad's a janitor. And my brother-in-law was my geography teacher. Wow. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty crazy. But um, my mum and dad, as I say, they give me, like I come up here for the weekend and stay with my friends up this way. And um, just do a bit of couch stuff and really mm -hmm. stay at some different places. Stayed in Blantyre for like two weeks and all over the place. And um, do a bit of couch surfing though. And then my mum would give me like a Monday off and then she'd be like, right, Chris, you better come home. I've gave you Monday off. Like, where are you? And I, I'd just make up an excuse about, oh, mum, I've missed the train. I've got no money. Come and get me pretty much. And they, they wouldn't come and get me or that, but I'd be stoked because I'm like, well, I'm going to ride for a couple of days and yeah. I'll go home. So then I'd go home and then I'd be in school and I'd be like, what am I doing here? And I was never bad or anything like that. I was just... You knew your path. Yeah, I'd be sitting in the class and it'd be like, it'd be so nice and sunny outside. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, listening to this stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't care about this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what am I, why am I listening to this? I don't need this and I don't want to do this. It just totally bores me. I was like, I want to go and ride. It's sunny outside. I live two minutes away from the high school. So um, in between periods, I'd just walk home and um, I'd get my bike and go out riding. And my mum would call me and she'd be like, um, where are you, Chris? Where are you? Better get back to school, this and that. I was like, oh, mum, I didn't feel well, so I went home, but then I felt better. So then I went out riding, <laughs> and um, she'd be like, oh, you can't be doing that, you can't be doing that, just come back and this and that. But kind of that went on for a while. <laughs> and then I kept coming up to Glasgow and then staying for longer and longer. Um, like a couple of days would turn into a week and then two weeks. And then when I'd go home, um, I remember one time it really sunk in because it was quite bad. And like, my mum burst out crying because she was like, I can't keep making up excuses for you. And then I think everyone in the school thought I was really sick or something like that. Uh, and I wasn't, I just didn't mm -hmm. want to be there. My life was up here at that point, mm -hmm. really. And then um, I nearly got took to court and stuff uh, because my attendance was that bad. And then, uh, but I, like, I never really, the only thing I cared about and I went to hell and back was to ride that bike. And um, that was the only thing that I cared about. And I was that passionate enough about it. I loved it, I absolutely. Brilliant. It's all I thought about 24-7, it's all what to do. Um, yeah, at night when I go to sleep, it'd be the last thing I think about, it'd be the first thing I want to do when I wake up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I nearly got took to court, and then they were chasing me for a while, but then they finally gave up on me. So I was like, oh, God, thank God for that. Imagine, <laughs> we man, we're yeah. taking you to court, we man, she's not going to school. Really. Really. Pursuing your passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. We're not going to school. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? But yeah, and then I left school with, um, I was meant to be doing my standard grades and stuff, and um, I was actually helping build the bowl in the unit. Um, when I was meant to be doing all that, so I, I left um, school like no qualifications, no nothing. But um, yeah, and then from there, I was just kind of living up here, and I was actually staying with Chick, the guy that owns the unit. I stayed with him for months. And then after that, I stayed with Gib for months, and after mm -hmm. that, I stayed with Fat T, and it just so on and so on. So many people, which were nice enough to let me stay with them, you know. But kind of good as well, not having like my mom and dad there to tell you what you can and can't do. Mm. So like I'd go out with my friends and that I was still one of the younger ones but I'd go out like Chaz and that and go to their house parties and stuff and I'd be like little cat, little guy there you know but um, it was a crazy experience and yeah I got crazy stories from, from that place it was used in the war to build like parts of planes and stuff then it was a distillery mm -hmm. So it's a proper creepy old old building. A lot you know? of history. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of strange noises. In yeah. There. Oh my god, the things I've heard is insane in there. And Definitely. Um, yeah. See, I think see also that that whole actual experience has probably been really good for you, humbling wise, in the sense that it just showed you probably some of your happiest times were when you were less busy. Yeah. And no no money. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's because so many people will look and be like, oh man, you know, I'll be happy once I've got this. Mm -hmm. Once I have X amount in my bank, once I have this sorted, then I'm. Yeah. And it's like, it's all excuses. It's like actually happiness just comes from your own yeah, self yeah, yeah. and, and we, being happy with what you're doing. And if you can make money from it, brilliant. Exactly. Well, that's it. I think if you're passionate enough about something, you love it so much, you'll succeed no matter what it is. And it's just. And you'll shiver yeah. for it, do you know and what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you'll bunk school for it, do you know yeah, what I mean? Totally. And I think, again, as well, just looking at the fact you were bunking school, right? And then, obviously, we don't advise that, right? But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like, you could have been away, like, doing drugs. Yeah, yeah. You could have been away drinking every period, and it's like, actually, I'm away to go and work on something that yeah, I want exactly. to do. Yeah, yeah. So there's always a positive there, do you know what I mean? It's not... I think when you're at that age, you don't really have a voice. It's always like the parents know you're better. You're told. And yeah. you, need to, you need to abide by it, even mm -hmm. though you're fixated on what mm -hmm. it is you want to do yeah, yeah. until mm -hmm. you start proving 
Exactly. That yeah. it's happening. You make, you make money, yet, Chris. Know, you yeah. make money. Yeah. Oh, that shite. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you go get a real job. I mean, oh, I know, yeah. Well, I think that's it. Like, I remember, like, some of the teachers back in my school would speak to my mum and they'd be like, oh, Chris can do so much better if you tried this and that. Mm. But, um, yeah, it just never, I guess it doesn't Never feel, clicked. Yeah, it just never. And it's like, I don't know. I'm so, I'm so thankful for, because, I mean, it could have went another way, you know. It could have just not not done anything, really. But um, mm -hmm. I've worked hard for it. And a lot of people think, oh, you're so lucky, this and that. But no one really knows the sacrifices I made. And I don't know anyone else that would really do it. Yeah. So, and, um yeah, but I think I remember saying that to the last time you were in, and they were, were having a wee party down here, and it was like kind of like you know that way you look at somebody like yourself on Instagram, and you know we're talking you know like whether it's clothing, the tattoos, you know amazing locations, but what they're not seeing is like 10, 15 years of pure massively yeah, totally. hard work, yeah, yeah. and like everybody denying denying you in the background, uh -huh. not making money, mm -hmm. having to stay fit and all that as yeah. well. I mean it's it's not an easy task. So tell us a wee bit then, so you. You are like you're living there you're every, here there and everywhere mm -hmm. and you're starting to get good i'd imagine and mm -hmm. are people around the park going fuck man chris man like you're the one to outdo or what how, how did it how did it start really uh, momentum i think um it kind of started when i was um i got sponsored by nike as well when i was 14 but that went that was down at a contest in sheffield it was called the backyard jam but my parents took me down to that and then this guy came up to me, but I wasn't really that bored because uh, my friends had just filmed um, filmed my whole run on this video, on this like video recorder thing. So I was too fixated on like watching that. And this guy came up, he's like, I want to speak to you. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, one second, one second. And then he spoke to my mom and dad because they were right behind me. But um, they were like, oh yeah, we really like Chris's style on the bike. Um, we'd love to support him with shoes and this and that and all this stuff. So, um, so that kind of happened. That was pretty cool, like just being that young and starting to get, get stuff. So that was pretty sick. But then... Uh, yeah, you just, it's what, such a big brand, so you never think to, to be part of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. absolutely nuts, especially from being such a small town in the middle of nowhere. Like, you wouldn't think that this thing would happen to a normal no. kid or whatever. No. <clears throat> so that so was kind of... So young as well. Yeah, that so was kind, kind of what started. And then after that, um, Chick sponsored me as well at the unit. So, well, obviously, I was living there stuff, but <laughs> but that was... Chick was, like, the first guy ever to sponsor me, which mm -hmm. is good. Um, yeah, and then after all that, when I was 16... Um, I started riding for BSD and mm -hmm. then I, I think I turned pro just as I was about 17 or something like that. Turned 17, I started to get a little bit of money and then that kind of, that, it was at that point then I realised I was like, damn, like this is crazy. Like I can actually get a lot of something and mm -hmm. not enough to like really, it was enough to get by on, you know, but not like I had to really ration it and stuff. But um, and then from there, I started travelling the world really and um yeah, flying all over the place, going to France, going to America, Chicago, like all over the world I was going. And then um, <clears throat> from there, it was kind of like, I still don't get it. I'm doing, I'm doing mm. this. It's absolutely nuts. But from there, it kind of, it just went oh, yeah. bigger and bigger. And it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, I got put on Red Bull when, when I was 19. And that was on my 19th birthday. I was just turned 19. And um, that was crazy because I came forward at the contest and uh like I didn't know if I was getting put on Red Bull or not, and then there was a, we were talking about it, a lot of emails and stuff. But came for the contest, and they had my helmet there and all that, and I was like, no way! And then they presented me with my helmet and stuff. So it was like the dream, a dream come true. You know, I mean, one of the best days of my life is getting to be part of such a sick brand. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then from there it's just kind of spiraled. Then right after that, it was Nike Pro as well. I got put on Nike Pro, and then yeah, and it just went absolutely mental. And it just seems to be one thing after the other, but. I still can't believe it. Like I'm flying halfway across the world, and I'm just like, "This is crazy. How is this happening?" Like I'm riding what, my what? bike. Yeah, yeah. Like who, who, who's wanting me to go here and do this? It's nuts, man. Like, <laughs> do you know, it's the same thing though. Like, like ha keeping that mentality so great. We are very much like that. And anything we've achieved, we're always running about. Like yeah. we're not ready. We are, how are we doing yeah, yeah, this yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Or and like I say to him all the time, it's like think about you the amount of places he's played all over the world. Yeah. For like arranging <laughs> frequencies, like for moving, like, it's like you, you're getting paid to yeah, do this, yeah. but it's like you see the reaction, you feel it, and that's why it's like you are genuinely changing people's lives. But yeah. for us, we are the boys for them, Barton. Like, exactly, yeah, do you know so, what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. like, yeah. how is it me? But it's like, you know, when you've got value and something to bring, people buy into it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah I, I still can't believe it though, and especially. Travel quite a lot with my mate Alex, and he rides for Monster, but the same bike company. Now. And we're just Very he's, cool. a, he's the same. We're just like he's from Perth, like a, a middle of nowhere in Perth, though, like just outside it, Cooper Angus, I think. 
And me and him were just like, how has this happened to us? Like, look at us <laughs> flying to Australia. <laughs> and we're like, what are we doing to ride these bikes, man? That's like, so amazing. But I, but I guess it. being grounded in the gratitude is something that... It'll bring you more. You know, it, yeah. it does. It, it brings more. It keeps you in the right sort of frame of mind yeah. for more opportunities and stuff. Plus, you're getting better. Yeah. Uh, you're still yeah. young, actually improving. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's the same with music as well. You can only get better. Yeah. 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 The more you do it, the better you're going to get. I think, though, it's important, though, because... You could have easily though went down the wrong route at fourteen, getting sponsored and that. And you start coming in like, "Ask Chris about I ah, speak to my security." You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you know, like, mate, calm down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like you know that could have easily went to your head though, mate. Being yeah, so young, sure. nineteen, signing for Red Bull, that could either go one or two ways. You either become think, the big bollocks, or you're like, yeah. "Why is this happening to me?" And yeah. that's the way you need to stay, mate. Yeah, which I think you will. Uh, yeah, I still, still feel like that fifteen-year-old kid. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's crazy, and still get the same buzz on my bike every single day than what I did have back then. So even more so, yeah, probably. Yeah, is that off? Yeah, definitely <laughs> more so now. Fresh gear, fresh bike, and <laughs> yeah, all. Like, like what's like, going on, yeah, man? <laughs> just like, just trick-wise, man. I can't believe it. It was like I remember when we were going the day of that heli jump going there, and just thinking, how has this all came about? I am literally about to, like, I've got my own helicopter here, and I'm about to jump out of it on the Burj Al Arab, like. How does this happen? Like, how have I got here? It doesn't, mate. It <laughs> doesn't <laughs> happen. That's yeah. why you do it. It doesn't. <laughs> but, yeah. It's absolutely not. So, talking about locations then. So, that's probably maybe number one. Yeah. Dubai, that one that you've done. But where else have you really well, I remember the whole kaleidoscope thing, man. Oh, my God. That was huge. I noticed a lot of the similar sort of uh, moves you were doing in that like yeah. in terms of like you know they're going around in a circle yeah, yeah, like down yeah, yeah. I was like because like, I watched the both videos back to back mm -hmm. and I was just kind of watching them both in that you know yeah. and I've seen some similarities that was an amazing one that kaleidoscope yeah, that was like I think that was that was like the biggest thing I'd ever done until until now but that was like kind of biggest project I've ever worked on but that was crazy because it was like working with a full on production crew mm. you know what I mean and like it was not me just being I'm usually it's just me and a filmer and he's like I'm like you good and he's like yeah go send it and I'm like alright sick so I'll just go whenever I'm ready but on this it was going when they were ready so mm -hmm. I'd go on action so it'd be like and action and rolling and action Chris and then I'd need to go so whether I'm ready or not I'm, I need You're to go going. you know so it was um, but it was cool to work in an environment like that I mean I'd never done it before and it was amazing to do that and that was some of the tricks that I'd always dreamed about doing so yeah, and it was all Red Bull making blooming dreams come true once again. And was that in Glasgow? Yeah, yeah, that was um, even cooler, man. Yeah, in Glasgow, in Govan, just, just a big warehouse somewhere. Yeah, it was in Govan. Aye, yeah, yeah, so that's that was awesome. so cool. Yeah, that how they moved the ramps about and all that. Yeah, like, just synchronized. Yeah, that was the boys had them on ropes, like pulling them in there. That, that right? Yeah. Wow. No, it was all automated. It was all. The boys like had your sweat and struggling. Really was. Yeah, you, don't, you don't see behind the scenes. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> the even the the cool, it's cool when you're like there's a wee trampoline you never yeah. expect and you just bounce on that and all that. You know, it's like it's it's out there stuff. Yeah. And I love I love the fact that you kicked it off in Unit Twenty Three in the back and you're doing the bike yeah, up and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. Keeping it, keeping That's it. Where it all began, it really, where it properly started beginning. Did you you, um, like have a hand in selecting the music for that yeah yeah, yeah. i did yeah, yeah. Just, just a bit of ass with the music so bro. apt yeah, like, yeah. For it, even the dubai did as well uh, yeah, yeah, i didn't right. i didn't choose the dubai one but um as soon as matty um sent that over the director i was like this is incredible i was like i love it man so mm. and it works so well but uh, i think that's really important with a good video you need a good song yeah because you know, it can go either way really because I would, I, even after watching the video i woke up with a song in my head the, <laughs> yeah. the next day yeah so i was I'm like and and, 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 yeah. and the, but then yeah. the songs gave me the, the visualizations are you doing the tricks the yeah. next day because yeah. of the song association yeah, so yeah. i was like it shows you the importance everyone loved the song in class like aye because so. it's just matches it's like uplifting it's positive as yeah. well and you're just like Whoa. the whole yeah. thing suits it do you know what i mean it really mm. does it's, but i mean if you ever need music you haul out this guy man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need something about upbeat man like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's on the horizon then what's what's next because obviously you've just did something that's so epic and like you know even when the lead up to us posting this we're putting out some teasers like people have been going nuts and i'm getting people messaging me i've not spoke 10 years like mate how are you getting chris guy he's like my hero and all that you know so it's like it's you obviously have a lot of impact so what's what's the next move next move for me is i'm always like i feel like i'm never satisfied as soon as i do do a video i'm like I'm really, I'm like, I'm stoked on it, obviously, but you kind of, you want more, do you know what I mean? And I think that's good. You're always wanting more on what's next, but as soon as I'm done, <laughs> like, what... as soon as I'm done, I'm like, literally, I'm just thinking about the next one and what I can do better. And I always watch a video back after I've done one and I'm like, damn, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? So I'm always trying to better myself, but 
I think now after doing the Dubai one, all I want to do is bigger projects and <clears throat> Mm-hmm. That's all stuff wanna, like that yeah that's all I want to keep doing and I know like I've got so much more to give and I just I can't wait to tick all these things off that I have in my head so mm-hmm. just for now I'm making a list of them and I've got another that'll be my biggest Red Bull project yet at the end of the year so oh nice yeah, another one nice and Red Bull then that amazing relationship there yeah incredible like I'm generally can't believe that I'm I'm part of the team and you know like I even had my um for Kaleidoscope I had my own can so I had my, my face on a can and stuff like that and it was selling in the that. shops which is Absolutely madness. But, Whenever um, you're posting about that, yeah, it's like yeah. that is that's some Snoop Dogg you know stuff. I mean? there, yeah, yeah, like to, to to like be a kid and you like drinking Red Bull and stuff, and then buying it in shops to go in and seeing your face on one. It's like, mm-hmm. what is going on? That's but, another um, level. Uh, that, it? that is mad. I'm just uh, and like like I say, there's like there's no other sponsor out there that back me as much as like what they do with the projects that. They, they, they literally turn my dreams into reality and I know it sounds pretty cheesy but nah. they, they fully do mm-hmm. so. they're such a really interesting brand Red Bull like yeah. obviously you've got the drinks but they're very diverse like when did they start off do you know it's like so sports I know how you they know? got the drink I know how it started it was like there was like some guy I think it was like from Taiwan or Thailand who made something that was like that mm-hmm. yeah. and it was like a blue and silver can and all that and it just kind of developed from there and it was like somebody bought the pattern I don't know how it was like a chemist anyway yeah, that yeah. kicked off but how they get into sports it's just and the extreme, extreme sports. sports link and everything else they do though just... they set the tone because yeah. your monsters and rock stars have all kind of followed suit haven't they mm-hmm. yeah Red yeah. Bull was yeah. Right, the main boy yeah red bull's the one for sure but definitely even the taste of it in the cans everything it's just yeah, sleek can't, can't cool brand it. exactly right obviously right we've we've been talking about all the, the glitz and the glamour of the game right i'm interested also for young people watching like maybe talking about some of the hardships of doing what you do and um, because i know i certainly know the ones that we get through that people don't see you know it's like the whole iceberg thing you, you see the tip of it but you mm. don't see the bottom yeah, yeah so like talk us through like actual falls and hurting yourself because you obviously see you're just doing a smooth trick yeah but people don't realize sometimes you've maybe done that a few times or, <laughs> or usually only two or three times and uh <laughs> but you know like you know so things like that are happening you're falling hurting your arm things so talk mm. us through that side of stuff yeah. that people don't see that's another thing it's like the pain that we put ourselves through is like we're pretty much pr- professional self-harmers <laughs> like <laughs> literally you're always like you're always sore there's always something that's pretty sore on you mm-hmm. but um it's like sometimes you're trying something you literally you beat your body so badly you're you're like bleeding from everywhere sweating like mad running on nothing you're like why am i doing this why do i keep trying this but then you land it and it's like wow that's why i do it it's for that feeling that you get and you watch it back you're like i can't believe i've done that or mm-hmm. this and that and it's just like nothing will ever beat that feeling for me mm-hmm. but um but yeah like um yeah, I put my body through a lot, and it was kind of every like yeah, everything's pretty sore. What's uh, some of the worst stuff that you've had? I have been really, really lucky, um, like compared to some of my mates and stuff. But I've only torn torn cartilage in my left knee, um, ligaments in my right ankle, and that's it. Oh, no bro- break, oh, no. no breaks. No, I broke my big toe. Um, but. Yeah, and sounds then, pretty pretty lucky, man. Yeah, seriously, yeah. Considering, <laughs> yeah. considering. <laughs> well, mate, yeah. I mean, uh, my arm pack broke yeah. once. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> I'm, expecting, I'm just expecting every part of you yeah. been like flimsy yeah. at one point. Nah, like everything, wow. everything's been pretty pretty good and pretty solid so far. Like, I've got like I fell on my tailbone in Israel once, and I thought I broke my back because oh. it was it was the worst pain I've ever been through, mm. and I couldn't get away from it and then um for weeks i couldn't sit down like going to the toilet like it was, on a donut no, it was that, horrible that man donut. so I, like i felt like i broke my tailbone but i don't think i did but i think if i did i'd have known about it but yeah. jesus man it was blown sore so. Wow. so you've got a lot of just aches and pains yeah. at, at times like, just now like you just you yeah. feel it a wee bit i always say times. i always say at the end of the year i'm gonna go to, like because rebel is pretty sweet as well we've kind of got like our own did that looks after all our athletes and like make sure your body is 100 percent I always say every year at the end of the year I'm going to go and just see what what I've done. Yeah, you know I mean, because I don't know what what I've done to this body, but I mean, it's, it feels pretty good, and I just kind of keep ticking away and, unless something's real bad, then I'll go and sort it out. But mm. have you been lucky? Have though. you given any like, a thought to what you might want to do after, or what age you want to take it to without like wrecking your body t- yeah. too much? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, at the minute I'm I'm just kind of happy just doing, doing what, what I'm you're doing, doing really. Yeah, and like. I think I'm going to do this for as long as I possibly mm. can and until I lose that feeling of what I'm doing now. But for, for the most part, I, I don't think I'll... I can't see myself ever losing that feeling right now, to be That's honest. Right. But um, for afterwards, though, I, I, I mean, 
I'd like to be doing something like within BMX for sure. Or mm. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Still got it's, a big, it's a big Still question that to ask, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a, a, fair, a fair thing. It's like, you know, being connected still in the sport, however you yeah, do it. That's, yeah. I mean, essentially, that's what you're going to want to do, isn't it? Like, Definitely. from commentating to everything, do you yeah, know what I mean? Because you'll lot. be in the place and have achieved the things to probably yeah. place you wherever you want, mate. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And I'll still, yeah, I'll still be, like, in there with doing the thing that I love, really, like, being around people that share the same yeah. love for the, for the thing I do. So, see... Mental health is a massive thing, obviously, at the moment, especially, like, uh, through music and, you know, uh, the industry that we're in, I guess, all of our creative mm. industries. So, like, how do you feel, like, in terms of travelling? Do you travel a lot on your own? I see you've got the missus with you a lot. Yeah, Cable yeah. on it. Or yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, you see her <laughs> online a lot. So, you're obviously propping her up as well, which is amazing yeah. to see, mate. Yeah. Um, so, I see you do do, but, I mean, how is it when you are travelling on your own and, like, from sometimes you doing a shoot and then straight to the airport somewhere else? because people think that's glamorous but that's actually can be head frying as well yeah it can be I mean uh, I remember there was one year I said yes to absolutely everything pretty much and it was absolutely amazing but it got to the point and I was saying yes and I was going from one place to another and then I was like I was so burnt out my body was destroyed and I'd be in a hotel room by myself and um, all my friends would be back home doing stuff and having such a laugh and having fun and I'd be like it sunk in I was like what am I doing man I was like what am I doing here I was like this is nuts and that and, I, and then after that, I was like, I will never do anything that I don't want to do. And like, I know there's things that we, we all do that we don't want to do, but I, I, now I'm very, I kind of pick, and, pick and choose, which is fortunate enough. I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that. But I, I always think that if I'm not enjoying myself, I'll never do something that I'm not enjoying. And uh, I guess like, um, yeah. That's <laughs> an important point though for people, isn't it? Because pe most people are just yes people. Yeah, yeah. And they're scared to say no, but you can actually hamper everything mm -hmm. by saying yes to everyone. I suppose it's important to do it, though, as well. Let's say, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, we can compare it to music all the time. Like, going and having a year like that, when you just smash absolutely mm -hmm. everything, gives you a lot of perspective in other Definitely. areas as well. Like, you know, what to say yes yeah. to in the future, what to exactly. maybe say no to. It's, like, it's building connections as well. It's networking because you might go to one that might actually turn out not to be a great ride or a great shoot mm. or whatever but you've maybe met some key person totally yeah, who's yeah. like do you know what we're going to yeah, sponsor yeah. you see next year yeah, yeah. let's stay in touch and it's like fuck that's yeah. that guy i met in that pure exactly. horrible time i nearly broke yeah. my back yeah. Yeah. My, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know whatever yeah, it may be yeah. so I, th I think that's probably the plus yeah. side of, of getting out there yeah it's definitely important to do it and like there are, sure there is things that i do that i don't really want to do sometimes but i think um yeah for more like Pretty much now, it's just everything I want to do, and I, I love it. But it was that year; it was just I said yes to everything, and I I was hardly home. Mm. I felt like I was home for like one day of the woman year. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. And body was fried. I was just sitting there, just like oh, like I need to just mm -hmm. go home for a bit. So where's proper home now? Proper home now for me is in uh, Old Kilpatrick, and uh, so yeah, five miles away from here. But um, for me, that was a really big important thing in my life was buying a house because I says I've never really felt like a Obviously, I had one in Stranraer, but that never really felt like home, home really, yeah. Um, so I always says to myself, as soon as I ever make any kind of money, I was like, I'm buying a house. It's the first thing I'll ever do. I don't mm -hmm. want a car. I don't want anything. I want somewhere that I can call home. So no matter where I go in the world, I'm always safe because I know I can come mm -hmm. home and I'm, I'm home. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And um, yeah, so I bought that with my girlfriend a couple of years ago. Um, maybe four years ago nice, maybe, nice and settled then five yeah so and um i love the area i'm in like it, i've got the hills behind me so i can go mountain biking up there you know change it up from bmx or come down here almost every day when i'm home which is five miles two, so, yeah. two minutes two Gla minutes yeah glasgow's right there as well exactly yeah airport as well it's just across the bridge so nice so, what yeah, do you what would you say see in terms of like dealing with all these things because you obviously keep very fit so how important would you say keeping fit is to maintain the lifestyle that you've got i think uh yeah very important really like um it's part of what i do and i think to be one of the kind of top top people in it you need to be fit you need to be able to try something for a hundred times or be ready to go when someone says right action go and not be <laughs> I've just tried mm -hmm. this 10 times, give me five minutes. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need to just go and you need to kind of, I think that's why I run so much and I do all these kind of hit workouts and road cycle and all that's just stamina and I feel mm -hmm. like it all helps and it's only really been the last two years I've kind of been training like that and treating it like that. But um, I love it and it's like the feeling you get when you go out and you go on a run and you feel amazing. It's the same kind of high that you get from mm -hmm. riding and stuff. So 
Yeah, it's really important, especially eating wise. Everything that's just, I think, in general, no matter what you yeah, do, I guess definitely. it's important to do it. But that's so awesome, mm-hmm. massive difference. So diet wise, then, is do you just keep it generally healthy? Diet wise, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, we're pretty lucky with BMX. It's pretty kind of like there, there's not really any rules or restrictions. Really, it's kind of just eat eat what you want to. You want really just show do. up, yeah, bro. Pretty much, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of I just keep a pretty balanced diet. I eat, everything but my girl's girlfriend's vegetarian so most of the things i eat are vegetarian but um which is probably more healthy anyway yeah. well, it like, is, it that is. side of it i think it's just it's important though man because we work with so many young people right and you know that look up to you or whatever but you know they're having chips and cheese at lunch and all yeah. that and that they're eating really really rubbish and obviously we all go through a bit of that being young yeah. you know you, you you're, you're led astray but I think it's important for people to look at role models at yourself or whatever and go, well, how is that? It's like, well, I'm actually maintaining my fitness. I'm drinking yeah. lots of water. I'm, you yeah. know, I'm not always bevying and all that, exactly. you know, stuff like that, because it could easily happen in the sort of lifestyle you live in. Totally, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially there's a lot of people I know as well that have just kind of got caught up in that over the years and then that's it. And like, before you know it, you get nothing to show for it and that's mm. it. But I mean, for what we do, it's such a kind of short-lived career. You know I mean, it doesn't really mm. last forever. Um but you can eat, make most of it, and yeah. I I want to really get the most out my squeeze body. out yeah, of it yeah. when you can get yeah. the most out of my body and everything that I physically can, and be happy with myself when I'm done. You know what I mean? And like actually not be like, oh, I wish I'd done that. I wish I'd wish I'd done that. I wish I'd done that. Could have like, done this exactly, better. Yeah. So I want to be totally fulfilled, and yeah, and that's it really. It's essentially just like minimizing regrets in it. Yeah, at all times. That's, we've discussed that before. It's like you know, if you can get through with like not really regretting anything that you've not done, or maybe something you have done, or whatever else. You know, that's yeah. it. It's good to clock that early on. Uh, yeah, yeah, Do totally. You know yeah. Before it's, I'm sure it was, a, ke- <laughs> was a comedian or that that was talking about like you know you can always tell the lack of shit people have done with how far back they have to grasp to tell you about the glory days, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly I remember right. seeing when I used to do judo when I was 15, man, champion, man, you know, and it's kind of <laughs> like, mate, you're 34 now, but yeah. <laughs> what have you been up to since judo, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I no, that's, that's, that's cool though, that you've had that mindset though, where you're kind of like, I want to squeeze out of this, I want to actually take it professionally. I mean, we see it in the DJ game all the time as well, that like people just abusing drugs yeah. and alcohol and just like, you know, showing up to a gig smashed. Yeah. And you're kind of like, mate, seen in the, the day, this is a job as well. Yeah, exactly. Have a bit, have fun, obviously, but exactly. maybe wait till the set's over. Yeah, or true, yeah, exactly, yeah. <coughs> just have a bit of fun, but just maybe take it a little bit more I think, seriously. I think that's it as well. I mean, especially back in the day, there'd be people like that, well, yeah, there's people that turn professional and then as soon as they're there, that's it. They think that, oh, that's it, I'm making money now. Well, goes to their just, just slow down and just, I'll just do this and that, but it doesn't work like that. I no. mean, you need to just keep working harder and harder and pushing limits, pushing your body, pushing everything and just, uh, yeah, because if not, if you don't do that, if you just keep thinking, oh, that's me, I've made it, that's it, that's me done now, then you'll just, they'll just say, see you later. You just well, the fall, next you'll just Chris fall Kyle. Off. You'll just fall off the wagon, will Exactly, you? Exactly. exactly. You get the next Chris Kyle right up you, yeah, waiting to come people. and do it. You know there's what always mean? people, so you need to kind of stay on top of it, I guess. Mm. Awesome. So that's that, that complacency thing, isn't it? That's what you need to avoid when you're like, no, I'm cool, I'm, I'm signed. Yeah, yeah. You know? I suppose a good question to ask, since we we are a studio and stuff. What kind of music are you into? Like, what's what's what you listen to when you're training and that? And what what is your stuff? Your go to stuff? Yeah, Relaxing I mean, uh, pff, it's like pretty crazy actually. I listen to everything, man. Like absolutely some crazy stuff. But then, yeah, like I really like eighties, man. Eighties is sick, oh yeah, but like that. And then I don't know. Post Malone, we write it. Yeah, yeah, but like Post Malone and stuff, and like a bunch of rap music. But then even even like dance music. Even like the UK number ones and stuff, man. Mm. Like it just whatever kind of gets me, you know. But um, anything. And just nothing in particular. Just nothing like in, yeah, nothing in particular, really. I mean, Billy Idol and stuff like that. That kind nice. of, that makes me nice. want to send it. But um, yeah, nice so, man, nice white yeah. wedding. Did yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, But something I'm scared of, like yeah, then I'll uh, yeah, I can put that on, and it's always been my go-to. So. Well, again, though, music's a, a motivator like anything. Like, totally. you know, you think about some of the best memories you've ever had when you hear a tune. Yeah, or, yeah. or like wow. your first girlfriend or whatever mm-hmm. it is. You're like, I mind that tune, man. Or, yeah, or yeah. a sad time or anything. Exactly. Right? And I feel like, especially with, like for the sports that we do as well, like, like it can um, can make you do anything. Sometimes if you have a tune on, you turn it up, you'll you'll do it. And I'm the exact same. I know I'm like, right, wait for the beat and then I just mm-hmm. drop in and then mm-hmm. I'll just send That's it. That. And it's like... I'm like, it just amps you up that bit more and it makes you get it done, you know? It's amazing how it does that. Yeah. In the morning, I find it's the best time for music. Like, the key, the couple of key tracks in the morning sets the tone yeah, for the yeah, day. Yeah. 
I think it's like um, there was one there was a playlist. It was the, the Great British Breakfast that came on. Right. And it was all those nineties kind of pure pure tunes wood, that I love, you know wood I mean? tunes, yeah. man. You, you wouldn't think so because I'm a <laughs> dance music guy, but like you know, I'm a bit like yourself that way. Like totally versatile, can barely put my finger on one artist. Or see if someone asks, I'm like, to be honest, it's like everything from like yeah. 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. 90s, the yeah. cheesier stuff yeah, to like lot. underground techno stuff to hip hop, souls of mischief, Aye. and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's totally, like so totally. broad for, yeah, for yeah. us, really. You know? I'm kind of the exact same, to be honest, man. Like, absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. It's see time for, and place, isn't it? See, for us, like being in music game, it'd be you can't just be into one style, like, nah, it, it just doesn't work like that. Yeah, you, I think you get bored of it. Mm. You know, like, Speaking you know, of that, is it, what other sports are you into? Like, yeah, I'm in uh, mainly bikes, really. Like, I love mountain biking, it's kind of similar to BMX, but it's almost like a breath of fresh air. If mm. I've done too much BMX, then I'll go and ride my mountain bike for a couple mm. of days or whatever, and it's just. Very similar because I'm up the hill. I'm always looking for spots and well, oh, I could do this, I could do that. So kind of same as BMX, kind of. But mm-hmm. that I like snowboarding. I like what else? Skateboarding. Cool. I don't know. I like absolutely everything, man. Like um, yeah. I like so, playing football as well, but I'm not very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll be fit though. Oh, you'll golf. be like an engine. I like golf as golf. well, but I'm terrible at that. Oh, you're definitely <laughs> terrible at that. I seen, I seen, I seen a video yeah. of hell now. Like, but what, I, what yeah. I, I was sitting with my mate when we were watching it. Yeah. It was the other night. We're going to be back sort of prep for you coming on, <laughs> and uh, I was like that. Even though he's shite, I love how he's pure went for the golf attire, yeah. man. You went and bought pure like, your golf yeah. clothing, look, the, the t-shirt yeah, straight. Yeah, like, he's wet. He looks like Tiger Woods yeah. there, but he doesn't play like... That's kind of the whole reason I like, kind of got it like, what it took, because I was like, oh, you can just get dressed up. And it's so sick, wear all these outfits and that. But I started playing it with my girlfriend's dad, and I went, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I would, but I really did. Mm-hmm. And then I'd been playing it a bit with the boys, and then we went, but... Fred, who edited that, he, he gave me all the rubbish ones. There were some good ones in there, but... I well, I come in and make sure I'm out of video, <laughs> don't I? Yeah. <laughs> but again, like, sick of tile. Yeah, oh, yeah. Know, he's it's, he's it's dressed good, to impress. It's just a good laugh. You go up there and it's just totally different. Isn't it? I mean, we don't do that all the time, so... And then but, when you do hit a good one, it's like... It takes ages to get around a blooming course. So. There's some feeling, though, isn't it? When you, oh, when yeah. you hit sort of a nice ping, man, yeah. that mm. sound, you're that like... connection. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a completely different sport as well. It's something you can actually like, have conversations with people, yeah. like play your so shot. Chilled and nice. Yeah, Aye. So, it's a take a couple thing. of beers out in the course. You know Aye, what I mean? People yeah. do that also. I mean, I would. I mean, I would. Right. I mean, we've uh, so obviously we posted up about this. Yes. Right, massive. Got some questions stuff. here for you. Yeah, I good. think we should probably get to Let's some get tore into them because people want to know, and I've you know even private messages like please ask them. That's like all right, all right, you can it, can yeah, it. It's all yeah, good. Yeah. So you you do the first one, Stevie boy. Who we got? So we've got Rushank underscore Bavzar. That's probably an amazing pronunciation there. And I'm so bad at pronouncing <laughs> things, by the way. We've still to do that video we're going to no, do. we're going to do a video. He just asked me stuff to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it'll just be a little total, uh, you know. It won't be fun. Anyway. Uh, hey, Chris. Sir, what move in your new video took you the most tries? And how many tries did it take? Mm, um, that's a good one. Um, to be honest, there wasn't really that many tries because we were kind of in and out with a lot of stuff. Um Probably there's one that I do and doesn't it's not even the one that looks the best or whatever the most spectacular but it's like I do a gap wall ride and then manual down a ledge to 180 but it's probably that one um, and that's just that took loads and it's just a manual 180 but it took quite a lot so probably that one yeah everything else kind of happened pretty quick that's cool. cool that's very cool this next one's hilarious Matty BMX what sort of animal is a haggis <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bird that's got one leg short and another so it can stand on hills. Yeah, so it can, just, so it can run in circles. Uh, that's what it is. <laughs> I didn't think it was a bird though. That's, that's the first, first I've heard it's been a bird. It was like in a hare type bird hybrid. That's, uh, you know, like a I'm rabbity doing. type thing. Aye. There's one in Glasgow Airport. Oh, come on. Aye, there is. Have you seen it? Yeah. It's my haggis. Is there? There's there one is. in Glasgow yeah. Airport. Yeah. In Glasgow Airport. Yeah. It's, oh, it's a stuffed one. Aye. 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 It's kind of like a Komodo dragon with hair or something. Right, uh, right. So that was from not that Simon. So mm-hmm. cheers for that. Uh, right, we've got one from Paul Finley, who's actually a, a DJ. Oh, He's right, done some sweet. stuff in the studio before. Cool guy, big big fan. Uh, can you ask Chris if he worked before becoming big on the BMX scene, and how he found the transition between a job with a guaranteed wage and something that doesn't really have that? Yeah, uh, I kind of. 
it didn't really work, but I, I worked in the in the unit kind of just when I was living there, like kind of helping out and stuff. But I actually used to work in the cafe and make like chips and cheese and that. And uh, <laughs> so I make a mean chips and cheese. But now um, <laughs> yeah, I used to work in there, like toss burgers and stuff, and just to kind of pay my way for being there and that. And um, that was it. So, but it wasn't. Check was like super. I could kind of go away whenever I wanted and then come back at be eleven there and kind of work in there. But it wasn't like a proper. Pro, I've never had a, a proper job, no, mm -hmm. not ever really. Mm -hmm. Which will be interesting because people watching it will have. So it's like you know that I, I can understand why he's asked that, but I yeah. mean, I guess the whole uh, the whole thing of this is just like go for what it is you want yeah. to do in it. Like that's yeah, yeah. advice wise. Just on that 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 subject, you know, it's something that obviously we've done is, is had jobs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I've always basically just worked my arse off while I've been working the job, like doing what I love, you know, mm -hmm. so when you're finished, you're just in making music, DJing, yeah. hitting people up, and then, you know, you're working until your eyes are closing at night, and then you're up for your other job at six, seven, yeah. on the building site doing that, and then you're back in, just, so it's like, if you're wanting to make that transition, you've got your actions, I've got to, like, back match, match your ambition there, because if you want to make that move from the job, then you've got to, like, hammer the thing yeah. you want to get to. I would also say as well as once you start seeing the first wee bit some potential money from your passion, it's mm. like just do the jump, man. Exactly. Because exactly. if you can Go make it. it, if you can make like two hundred yeah. pounds yeah. that if week, it, if it's you can do to, it again. If it's, yeah, if it's enough to like eat on and get by on, then that's it, isn't it? It's totally. It's just yeah. like, Absolutely. Cool so it's a lot of it's risk. It's like Pretty take much. the risk. You Are know? you willing to take that massive risk? That's See, it. most yeah. people aren't though, man. Like they're that they're that scared of going down an alternative yeah. route that by the time that they're like, do you know what? I'm fed up of doing what I'm doing. Mm. I'm 41 now, yeah. and I'm not going to be a BMX star it's anymore. Too, or, or. It's too easy for people to get caught up in like the the same job. I think and get caught in that working a nine to five, and everyone knows each other in their work, so it's more of a social group. So they just go in and they do that, and um, mm. yeah. So I think it's too easy for people to kind of do that. But I, I guess I'd done it when I was young enough to. To get away from everything before I even got into it, really, I was lucky enough to do that. So the next question we've got here is from the Edward Joe and uh, mm -hmm. Edward Joe. Uh, you know what? See, because his name's that, I always like get confused. I think his name's Ed in it. Sorry, Ed. And uh, Ed is the camera guy for Gavin Bell. Mm -hmm. So brand new guy. Those Hello, guys Ed. are doing. Yeah, go and check out Gavin Bell and those guys. Um, so Edward's saying he's a big fan also and then uh, when he seen it in the story he was like bro it, it you're getting went, cooler it, every day it just went mental actually he sent me about 12 messages <laughs> no, no way. Way. <laughs> and, he's yeah. like he's like Thanks, bro man. you're getting you're getting cooler every time yeah. and I'm like well thank you that's uh, yeah. well, pretty cool so um, what are some of your goals over the next five years do you want to start something like your own brand or continue as you are been a huge fan for years cheers for that Ed nice one thanks man um, but yeah like Plans for the next five years is uh, going to keep doing what I'm doing, but just take it to the next level and just kind of keep, keep you know, literally keep doing what I'm doing. But I, I have been thinking about starting my own brand um, because I'm no longer riding for Nike anymore. Um, they kind of they stopped the whole BMX program, but um, it was good while it lasted. So mm -hmm. it's been a great couple of years with them. But I think it's kind of happened at the right time because like now I've kind of been getting a lot more opportunities to do like other things like um, that was a bit, restricted on before when like I couldn't go away and do like mo model stuff or whatever for other people and stuff like that and now I've kind of got a lot of opportunities to go away and do other jobs for people and get to wear cool clothes like things that I actually like you know and um, mm -hmm. it's uh you're not just limited yeah I'm not limited so I love it but I'm also thinking about starting my own brand and I think it'd be so sick to now is probably the right time to do it mm -hmm. and that's what I've been really thinking about so um we'll nice. see nice uh, good question yeah mate. we'll see but I reckon it might uh, the plan was to start something this year and um nice one and go for it so and i reckon because i'm really i really love kind of like fashion and stuff as well i think it'd be sick to do some really cool i have some good ideas for stuff so definitely would be yeah. buying some of your stuff then mate yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just make some. xl please yeah, yeah for sure. and i know you're not yeah. xl but, but i think um as well it'd be sick just to have something that you've started from nothing and you can call it yours you know what i mean and mm -hmm. really really put all the work in on it and like i know i push all my brands and all my sponsors and stuff but um I guess if it's actually your thing, you know, you'd want to look, at it, wanna look be, at it a bit differently yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, all these massive brands have just helped grow who you are totally, anyway. Yeah. And, the, you know, it must be so amazing. So you're now in a better position where you could put out your own brand and it's not going to be like a conflict of interest, I don't think, you know, yeah. because your name's getting bigger and bigger. So probably now is a good time to strike. I think so now, yeah. And it, like, yeah, I don't have a clothing sponsor at the minute. I mean, a couple of people send me stuff and 
I do a couple of odd jobs here and there, but I, I love the freedom. I can wear whatever I want. And I, I, f I mean, for years I was on Nike. I hang out for 10 years. I was on them for over 10 years, actually. And um, just wore pretty much ever day, from Nike. Neck down, Nike, all like that was it. So it was, it, which was amazing because the clothes are sick, but it almost got to the point where it's like mm -hmm. almost wearing a suit to work. I'm like a mannequin. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a Nike yeah, mannequin. Yeah, yeah, I feel, yeah. So, but I mean, it's nice to kind of get that freedom now and be able to wear what I want and yeah so so they've stopped st doing stuff with sort of BMX and yeah they cut the whole like, BMX program why, why, why do you think that is or? um I'm, I have no idea I mean skateboarding's so big and they don't we, we, we were we were all wearing like Nike skateboard and stuff anyway so okay didn't really matter but I mean they were such an amazing brand and they were so helpful like towards my career put me all over the world and this and that so it was amazing and I was sad to see it go um but like they let me know a year before the contract was up that it was coming to an end for us all, and um, I was like, "It's fine," you know what I mean. So I just went went the whole way with it, and I still wear some nice stuff now, and there's no hard feelings there at all, you know what I mean. So um, yeah, so that window closes, another opens, eh? Yeah. Well, new so opportunities when you come. You want to get uh, Luna, and I think we, we need to speak about this man. Aye, <laughs> good, right. So Luna dot is that PVM. There we go. Do you have a favourite song to ride? Um, oh, favorite song, probably. It changes from time to time, really. But um, oh, that's such a tough one. Were you listening to any music for the Dubai thing? No, none at all. Nah. Well, you it's mentioned just... Billy Idol there. Earlier. Billy Idol, yeah. Do but um, mean? if you don't know who Billy Idol is, go and check him out right yeah, now. Yeah, Billy man. Idol. But what song is it? Um, Turn this off and check it. Yeah, out. yeah. The night yeah. comes straight back. Yeah, Rebel Yell. That's it. Billy Idol, Rebel Yell. That's probably my favorite kind of go-to song. Go-to war. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, I feel like I, when I listen to that, I can do anything and I'm, it just kind of takes all my fear away and I'm just like, ah, I can do, I can <laughs> do I could jump out of a fucking helicopter yeah, right yeah, now, man. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it kind of, yeah, I feel like you can do anything when you listen to that. So there's a couple of songs, um, other ones that are different, but that's probably the main go-to and it has been for all the years that I've been riding, really. Brilliant. So that's the questions there, unless you want to get any more out. The, 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 there was loads, the, the there was loads. loads, so don't get angry, don't be annoyed if we never asked. I'm sorry, um, you know, I'm sure we could maybe do this again sometime. Sure, he is yeah. a busy guy, we could do some stuff. Now, one of the things, we'll, we'll, we'll leave the, the sort of, the biking world, even though biking is including in this, right? <laughs> you were Lara Croft. Yeah, 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 Philly, yeah. That doesn't make sense to you, so nah. please explain. Yeah, so uh, no one really knows apart from, like, my close friends and that. And, and now uh, us. And you guys, yeah, so it's <laughs> like... But yeah, um, I think it was in 2017, I got the opportunity to be... Um, I got an email pretty much off one of my friends who's a stuntman, Alistair Witten, and he said, um, he was like, would you be up for being a stunt double, a potential stunt double for Lara Croft in the new <laughs> Tomb Raider movie? And I just kind of laughed. I was like, "No way, I can't believe this." But I was, like, guy, I was like, "I was like, yeah, man." Like he's like, because he knows that I ride road bikes as well, and that I'm quite a small guy, or whatever, so a kind of female body. Or <laughs> so, I don't know, but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, and yeah. So he asked me, and I said, "Yeah, right away." And I sent him all my measurements and this and that. Went down for a wig fitting, and um, they fitted my wig and stuff. It was so crazy. And then um, flew back home, and then. Flew back down to London for a month and a half. I was down there, and um, yeah, I was uh, I was Lara Croft pretty much. So I'd have to go in for hours and hours of makeup every single day to get all my tattoos covered up at like four in the morning. All this, uh, get my wig on, get it sewed into my hair, and uh, it was like real tight. It would almost pull my my head back. It was so weird. And then um, wear this woman's clothing all day long in front of loads of people, like walking through <laughs> London dressed like a woman. Yeah, you know I mean, like it was, uh, <laughs> it was mental. So, um, uh, so that and then, fun. well, it was, it was incredible. But um, the stunts I was brought in on that movie to do was like um, just kind of weaving in and out of traffic. That's what it started off as. And then I had to do a restaurant scene where I uh, weave in and out of tables in a restaurant. And then it kind of spiraled from there. I remember he, he, one of the stunt, court, uh, stunt coordinators said to me, he was like, oh, would you, how do you feel about getting hit by a car? <laughs> and I was like, 100%, man, I was like, I'd love to. And like, I've just, it sounds so crazy, but it was like one of those things you've always kind of wondered, like, what it would feel like, you know, mm -hmm. being on a bike and getting thingy, because it's happened so many times nearly in the street when we've been riding street. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, I was like, yeah, 100% down for that. And, uh, so yeah, and then it came to doing it, and obviously I've never, 
I've never done anything like that. And um, I, I remember it though, I wanted to get hit on my right hand side because that's the side I can crash on easiest. Mm -hmm. That's the side I can take it to. Mm -hmm. But then um, the the people, the uh, producers and that were like, no, like you, you need to get hit on the left side because you need to be looking that way or whatever. And I was like, oh no, I don't know how you kind of crash on that mm -hmm. side. It was total alien to me. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I had to, my stunt coordinate, uh, stunt coordinator came up to me and he's like Chris he's like there's a lot of people watching this he's like if you do a good job of this he's like this can last a lifetime and in, in the stunt world like you can get more and more jobs if you do a good one so I was like he's like really sell this one so you, you need to send it <laughs> so I was like okay okay so first one just flew in and it was so scary because I had to judge a guy driving a car that I don't even know and he was a stunt man but stunt driver so he had to drive and then stop at the right time and I had to just plow into the into the bonnet and actually go through the windscreen and a lot of people asked me they're like oh was it a fake windscreen and I was like no it was a full-on real windscreen and it was actually laminated so it was even tougher and I had to really slam myself through it and uh I think the first time I didn't go right through it and then uh, but we had two cars there so we could like change them in and out but um so yeah I ended up doing getting hit by a car four times in front of like a thousand people because we had all the extras there and everyone but the people behind me all the extras behind me they kept messing it up i don't know what they were doing too busy watching or something i don't know what they were doing but um so i got hit four times by this car really sold it and just like let would let me just land on my head and everything and uh yeah i remember it wasn't that sort of time because the adrenaline but after everyone's, oh, you done such a great job, this and that, and all that stuff. And then, uh, but the next day, <laughs> I, the next day, I could hardly walk. It was like it was weird. It was a weird pain. It was like my bones were aching. It mm -hmm. wasn't like just like a bang. It was like my bones were actually aching. Just from being thrown around, yeah, rattled yeah. about. Fully, but um, that was such a crazy job because I got to meet the actress and stuff, and just loads of people. But um, and then my stunt coordinator as well. He was like, "Go home, do your motorbike license." And he's like, "I'll get you so much motorbike work and stuff like that." So I went home and done that, but. Um, I think I've kind of looked at that kind of side of things, and I think for now I'm not really. You're not that bothered. Nah, I think I kind of like doing what I do yeah. for now, and I think, yeah, maybe sometime in the future, maybe the I, right thing comes yeah, along. You could you could go and do that, but I, it wasn't until after I'd done that car hit, I was like, I could so easily if that had hit my knee, that could have been my knee done, and it, for, with your career over totally, and for what for that one thing. So mm. it wasn't I wasn't thinking at the time. It was. Only after that. Christ, so, that's a, such a good yeah, point. What an experience, but it was, uh, I'm glad to get it. Do you know what's it. funny as well? You probably made a better scene out of it coming from your left-hand side because you don't know how don't to fall on that. I don't know how to take Whereas it. if yeah. you'd went the old comfortable way, you know, yeah. you would have saved yourself. Exactly. And you, would, you know what I mean? Whereas the left, it's like, you know, yeah. it's like trying to throw a stone with your left yeah, hand yeah, or something. Yeah. Like, you know. it, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I actually probably worked out better. Yeah, it was bad. But I can send you those uh, photos in there after this as well so you can show the people at home yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, definitely. You put it in for a laugh. <laughs> you won't be able to unsee it though. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a good looking woman, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's something else. Mm. Amazing, man. <laughs> Amazing. What a show, what an episode we've had today. Definitely, it's been a... Total pleasure, mate. I appreciate I you coming like, in. I'm so, ha we're so just happy. here and all that, but you know what it's like logistically sometimes it's hard to make happen. But so hard to, to all get all over the world, do yeah. you know what I mean? But then there's been times I've messaged him back as well and I'd be like, Yeah, can we do it this week? And he's like, Oh, we like, I can't. I and I'm like, so it's been it's so I know, hard it's not just you. It hasn't been, it hasn't been but, it's been both ways. But it's been it's been better that it's done that because now we've kind of brewed things up better. Yeah, and, yeah. Let's you know, do another one. Yeah, let's do yeah. another one. <laughs> I'm already actually having ideas of stuff we could maybe do that's yeah. a wee bit quirky. So I'm keen. Um, we could do yeah. some stuff. We could do some stuff. Yeah. And obviously, if there's any any of your guys in your world that you know that would like to come on, then let For us sure. know, man. Yeah, would yeah, happily there's, there's some guys. a few a few boys that I know that we could tell some really good stories mm. and. You can bring them on. We'll do a four-way one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Chick would be a good guy to get on. Aye, that's it. we've spoke about that before. Chick would be brilliant. He would be. Well, he's seen people come and go in that park. Man, he has. Man. He's got blooming stories from yeah. years and years and years. And like, even when he used to work with cranes and that, he's got so many crazy Aye, stories. Some of the stuff Chaz used to tell me that he's, yeah. his dad, what I mean, him had been stitches. Like, <laughs> yeah. Some of this stuff, like, yeah, he's some guy, <laughs> such a nice guy. Like, yeah. I mean, the whole part, all the guys around there are great. Yeah, and it was as I was saying, I was watching all the Instagram stories live when you were in. Dubai, so I was yeah. watching me Chubbs and Dave Summertime and all that, and I'm like, yeah. yes, it's great. Yeah. So yeah, see that video I tagged he's in there, and Dave just makes this weird noise <laughs> yeah. now, and he's like, eh. <laughs> he's like, just yeah, yeah. like, 
Because I was back in a humour, man. I was like, I tagged him in it like, mate, brilliant, man. <laughs> right, excellent. So cool. this has been episode 28. Eight. 28, 28 with Chris Kyle, the legend. Cheers for the case of Red Bull and all that. No worries. Thanks for having me on, boys. And thanks yeah. to everyone for the questions. And yeah, I'm stoked to be here. So. Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Till yeah. next time. Till next time. Cheers, Cheers my man. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Boom.